In this video, we're going to talk about what happens when you multiply two powers by the same base, what happens when you divide two powers with the same base, and what happens when you find a power of a power. We'll begin with what happens when you multiply two powers with the same base. Then we're going to write the product of the two powers as a single power in our four examples here. And then we're going to write a general rule to find the product of two powers with the same base. Now notice here that in problem I, we have 2 squared times 2 to the third, where our bases are both 2's. So what that means is our base is going to stay a 2. Then what we're going to be able to do is to take those exponents, we're going to take the 2 and the 3, and we're going to be able to add those together. So we'll have 2 plus 3, which will give us 2 raised to the 5th power, which becomes 32. Now we know this because it's like saying I have 2 times 2, and then we're going to multiply that by 2 times 2 times 2. Hence I have 2 to the 5th power, which is what we're saying there. So again, that's how we get our final answer of 3 squared. But we get that by adding our bases. So let's take a look at problem 2 here. We have 4 to the first power, so we have a base of 4. Then we have 4 to the fifth power, and we have another base of 4. So we have twin bases here. So we have a base of 4, which means what do we get to do to our exponents? We get to add them. Again, because it's like saying we have 1 4 here, and then we're multiplying that with the 5 4's that we have here, which in turn should give us 1 plus 5, which is 6. So again, if I have my 1 plus 5, that will give me a 4 to the 6th power, which comes out to be 4096. Let's take a look here at number 3. So here we have 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 5th, and we have twin bases. So when you have twin side by side, we're going to get to do what to our exponents? That's right, we're going to get to add those. So if we want, we can even do that addition right here and go, hey, that should be an 8, which is going to give us a 5 raised to the 8th power which in turn, when we multiply that out, is going to give us 390,625. On problem 4, we have x squared times x to the 6th, so we have twin bases of x's. So what do we get to do with our exponents? I want you to try this one on your own. So go ahead and push pause, and when you're done, push play, and we'll see if you're right. Did you say to add them? You're right. And 2 plus 6 is 8. So here we'll have x raised to the 8th power. So a general rule that we could use is we could say that if we have a raised to the m times a raised to the n, then we then have a raised to the m plus n. And this would be our general rule that we could use. Now let's take a look at what happens when you divide two powers with the same base. So we're going to write the quotient of the two powers as a single power. Then we'll write a general rule for finding the quotient of two powers with the same base. So here we have 4 to the third power divided by 4 squared. Notice that our bases are the same, so they're stacked. So we'll have then our exponents, but instead of adding them, we will subtract them. So we'll have 3 minus 2, which is a 1. And so here we'll have 4 raised to the 1 power, which is 4. Now if I was writing this as a single power, the single power, this is what I would want to write. But if I'm going and simplifying it down, I would write a 4. So I'm going to have you try number 2 on your own. This says 2 to the 5th divided by 2 squared. So go ahead and push pause, and when you're done, push play, and let's see if you were right. 
So our 2 to the 5th and 2 squared, we have the same basis, and when they're stacked, you subtract. And 5 minus 2 is 3. And so I'm going to have 2 to the, now the 3 is a positive, and so it should get to go right next to our 2. And another way to know where that belongs is because it's a positive, it's going to be on the a whole number. If it was a negative, I would have to write that as 1 over 2 to the 3rd in order to get that. But it was positive, so we can leave it this way. Um, another way you can think about that is that there's more 2's on the top. Notice that we have a, a 5 on the top and only a 2 on the bottom, so we're going to have our 2 to the 3rd be on the top. If you're having trouble understanding why you get to subtract those, we can think of it this way. If I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the 5th, and I divide that by 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, I am then able to cancel out two sets of 2, leaving me with three 2's. So that's why quotient written as a single power, and if I wanted to continue simplifying, I would get an 8. So go ahead and try number 3 on your own here. We have x to the 6th divided by x to the 3rd. So we're going to push pause, and when you're done, push play, and we'll see if you're right. So here we have x to the 6th and x to the 3rd. And so we have the same bases. We know we have a base of x, and we have a 6 and a 3, and we're going to be subtracting those. So 6 minus 3 is 3. It's a positive, so we know that our x to the 3rd is going to be a whole number as opposed to being underneath a 1. So we won't have to have that. And x to the 3rd is written as a single power and simplified. For problem number 4, here we have 3 to the 4th divided by 3 to the 4th. Now these are kind of special because not only are the 3's twins and they're stacked, but they're actually kind of identical. And so those should just cancel out entirely and give me a 1. Now, how would that look if I chose to use my subtraction method? If I chose to do that, I would have 4 minus 4, which is 0, which would give me 3 to the 0 power, and as we know, anything to the 0 power is a 1. So either way, I still get the 1. So for a general rule, we might say that if I have a to the m divided by a to the n, my answer would then be a raised to the m minus n. Let's take a look at one more scenario. What happens when you find a power of a power? So we're going to write the expression as a single power, and then we're going to simplify it. And then we're going to find a general rule for finding a power of a power. So in problem one here, we have 2 raised to the 2 times 4, or 2 squared raised to the 4th power. So when this happens, what we're basically saying is that we have 2 squared, and we have that 4 times. And using what we know from earlier about multiplying powers with the same base, we know that we would just add these together, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 we got to add all those together, we would get an 8. So notice that 2 times 4 is 8. So in this particular instance, we can take that base of 2, and we can multiply our 2 times 4, so that we're able to have 2 times 4, which gives us 2 to the 8th power, which is again written as our single power, but if we wanted to continue to simplify this, we would be able to get 256. So take a look at number 7. So here we have 7 raised to the third power, then all of that raised to the second power. So what would we do to the 3 and the 2? That's right, we would multiply them. So we would have 7 raised to the 3 times 2, which would then give us 7 to the 6th power, which is enough to satisfy what we were looking for, just simply writing it as a single power. So we'll just go ahead and we'll stop there for now. 
So I want you to try number three on your own, y to the third raised to the third. So go ahead and push pause. When you're done, push play, and let's see if you were right. So here we have y raised to the three raised to the third, which allows us to say that we have y raised to the three times three, which gives us y to the ninth. For number four, we have x raised to the fourth squared, which allows us to have x raised to the four times two, which is going to give us x to the eighth power. So a general rule for that might look like x, let's do it with a like we've been. So if we have a to the m, raised to the nth power, that's going to give us an answer of a to the m times n.